Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm super excited about this video and how the DIYs turned out. So this month, the theme was backyard barbecue. This first DIY is a yard dice interest inspiration. So guys, let me just tell you that a two by four was $12.57. And um, the challenge is $5 per project. So what I did was I went over to the clearance section. If you want to make this project as well, I encourage you to go over to the damaged wood clearance section where sometimes the wood may be slightly um, altered or it may be split or something is wrong with it why it is in the discounted price. Now this particular piece of four, two by four, I got for 70% off and I, um, asked the guy if he would cut me six blocks four inches long and he happily did that so shout out to the guy at the home depot for cutting these pieces of wood for me so i brought them home and i used some 60 um coarse grit uh, sandpaper and my palm sander and i sanded these down I started on the edges and I stayed there just for a little bit long enough for it to round it out and then I went down the side sorry the edges and once I went down the edges then I also sanded down the surface of each side so prior to looking at the clearance rack I actually looked at the I guess the main rack I don't even know if that's um, what it's called but when I uh, priced the first two by four, it was about $12. Well, it wasn't about, it was $12.50. And then I went over to the clearance rack because I knew I only needed a little bit. And I was so excited to get this done. And I was really excited to get this done. First. After I send it down all six blocks, it is a little time consuming, but the end result was well worth it. Express, oh yeah. Typically, I would use my Waverly um, Antique Wax, but for this particular project, I had a lot of time and it was a beautiful day, so I decided to use the regular stain and sit on the back porch. And there wasn't a lot in the can, so I had to come up with a great plan to make this little amount of stain stretch. By the way, if you haven't noticed, I have in live and voice over line with us today. So I enlisted the help of my husband's Card detailing sponge don't tell him it'll just be I don't know I haven't seen it type of response I mean it works for everything else so comment below if you do that too or if it's just me okay guys so I'm not gonna bore you too much I will kind of talk to you so it'll keep you occupied but I'm just basically using the car sponge because I felt like using the sponge, it would distribute the stain a little bit better, um, being that I only had just a little bit to go a long way. And I quickly found out this was not the best way to stain these blocks. Because I felt like I could conquer more if I went this way with this. So once I set up a makeshift um, work station outside, it went a lot quicker. So it was like I could just do an assembly line of things. Once I had stained all the blocks, then I hit another small bump it in the road. It so good. And to be honest with you, a little part of me is a little nervous about putting the dots because my husband, 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 my husband doesn't have the little thing to make the dots. And I'm trying to be really creative and keep this on a budget level, but I don't, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do with it. So... I'm gonna have to come up with something. All right, let's go. Okay, so it's so hard to explain it, but basically I had a basketball, um, no worries, voiceover line will take it from here. So I went in and I made my image be a one inch by one inch. Now this was originally a basketball and I removed the lines, if that makes sense, and I was left with this little circle. And initially I went in and I was trying to make the dice and I was going to just size it based on the size, putting the dots in the order as one, two, three, etc. But as I did that, I found that it was creating more of a headache for me. And then I finally decided to just go in and put a bunch of dots on a sheet of paper and peel them off. 
Now, no worries. If you do not own a vinyl cutting, mach cutting machine, there are other options. Um, you can get some of the little circle dots from Office Depot, Walmart, or even the Dollar Tree. I think they carry those. I think something else that would be super cute is to co color coordinate them. Um, maybe using all blue, all green, or whatever color you like. Take it from here, real time, Lon. For me to just cut a bunch on here and just pull them off. So I'm gonna show you how I did that. And it kind of worked a lot better for me. So like I said, I just peeled them off and I did it. I, I just eyeballed them. I did not use a ruler or anything like that. And I feel like they did really well. If you choose to do this and you don't want to eyeball, I would definitely suggest using a ruler. I also forgot to mention that I um, got a die from one of our board games. And I used that as my guide to know where to place the stickers. Because this is something that's going to stay outside, I did apply a generous amount of Mod Podge to all sides. And once it dried, we had to test them out. I absolutely love the way they came out. And when you come to my house for a backyard barbecue, you can definitely plan on us playing Yahtzee in the yard. So like I said, this video is part of the 5 Under 5. It's hosted on the 5th of every month where you have to create 5 DIYs and each DIY has to be under $5. This challenge is hosted by Missy from The Crafty Cove, Emily from Farm Charm Chic, and this month's co-host is Devin from Freckled Mom DIY. I have linked their channels as well as the playlist for this challenge in my description box below. DIY number two is a Pinterest inspiration as well. Now, I love going to backyard barbecues, but I do not like the, the bugs that comes with it. So I went over to the Dollar Tree and I picked up this really cute mason jar. This is something new that they have and it has like a little um, hanger on it. I picked up one lemon, one lime. I got a pack of the tea lights from the Dollar Tree. One of my friends was so sweet to gift me some citronella oil, and then I cut a couple sprigs from my rosemary bush. Now with the help of a little YouTube magic here, I cut this lemon into several slices. And I couldn't forget about that cute little lime. Okay, so the tea light had a little aluminum casing around it and I tried to pull it off I tried to push it out and I was unsuccessful so I got some scissors and I cut down the side of it and very carefully I pulled the aluminum off of the candle the purpose of me doing this is because the inspiration that I saw did not have any um, aluminum on the bottom of it so I wanted to ensure that the candle would flow. Later on you will see that I do put one in with the aluminum and it did float so cutting it off is totally optional. Next I went in and I put the um, lemon slice and the lime slice, the two sprigs of rosemary and I dropped about six to eight drops of citronella oil in there and I filled the um, jar up with water just below the rim then i placed the candle in took them outside my family and i we do not have any allergies so it worked really well for us and i will say that it was really great at repelling the mosquitoes and the bugs but the flies not so much so i'm on the look out for a fly repellent so guys, here's the finished product. What do you think? I think they're so cute. They look so great out here on the porch. It works. So what I would suggest is to definitely straighten up your wicks. But, oh, it smells so good. The reason why I said straighten up your wicks is because they do lay to the side and these candles do not burn burn very long. I also set them up so they would be out of the way of the rosemary. Hello guys and thank you so much for stopping by my channel. I am Lon and I'm so glad you're here. On my channel I do affordable DIYs, thrift flips, a little gardening, and so many other things. If that is content that you like, I hope that you would consider sticking around. So guys, I'm going to let Real Time Lawn take it from here for DIY number three. 
Okay guys, so on this very next project, I got one of these little, it looks like it may be a meteorite or something that was a pretend meteorite, shall I say. That was um, a little stand at the Dollar Tree, the name of it, if you guys are interested. And initially when I got it, I was had no clue, but I thought it was interesting and you know I love picking up unique pieces, so I grabbed it. And then I grabbed this disposable grill topper from Dollar General. I got it and it's been sitting to the side for quite some time until today. So, the help of a little YouTube magic, I've already cut it out. And if you haven't guessed, it's going to be a barbecue grate. How cute is that? Wish me luck. If you choose to do this, don't use your good scissors. I did use some older scissors that I had here at the house and using those allowed, it cut very, very easily. And um, what I did was I just went around the edge of the grate and I just used a Sharpie marker to find the shape and then I cut around the edges. It was super duper easy, but again, I used older scissors for this. And it's sharp, but it's not too terribly sharp for me. I mean, um, if you do choose to make that, take that into consideration. And I'm actually thinking about going around and putting just a little bead of hot glue so it won't be um, prickly feeling. Next, I'm gonna go in with some black chalk paint. And I'm just going to take this down because this is going to be, take, take this down. I am going to paint this down because it's going to be um, the base coat for my grill. And this time, because I'm using a lot for the remainder of the projects that I'm going to do, I'm using a lot of, um, using a lot of vinyl that I've cut with my, using my silhouette. And so this time I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to use more of the acrylic paints because I've noticed the last couple projects when I used chalk paint, it gave me a little bit of a fight coming off onto the chalk paint. So I'm gonna try and see if maybe um, the acrylic paint will pull off a little bit better. So that's it, that's just one coat and I'm pretty impressed with it. So I'm gonna let this dry just a little bit. But guys, what I didn't realize was going to happen later in this project happened. You'll have to keep watching to find out. I had this great vision that I was going to paint some yellow, red, and orange, and it was gonna look like this really cool flame underneath the grill, and it was an absolute flop. Absolutely a the biggest flop. So, here I go with my eyeballing. Down this way. Yep, angle it is. All right, let's see if I'm gonna pull up any paint. Ah, and here comes the paint. This is what happens behind the camera sometimes. Look at that. I went to put it on there, and as I lift it up, we're not gonna, we're not done with this. We're gonna sit this to the side and come back to it. Okay, I was very, very upset about this. And I just scraped everything off as much as I could. I went back with my black chalk paint, painted it over. I did some really quick strokes because I knew that I needed to finish this project and move on to the next. And I just mixed the red, the yellow, and the orange. I was like, I am not even going to do anything elaborate at this point. It's just going to get done. So this is a real life situation and sometimes you'll have a really great plan that it just doesn't execute very well. So if you are new to crafting, don't get discouraged. Just think outside of the box. Try not to be perfect. At least I know that's what I tell myself all the time. And this is how that project turned out. So you guys will have to let me know what do you guys think. Did I save it or no? If you're still here with me, drop a clock emoji in the comments below. Buckle up because we're gonna zoom through DIYs four and five. Going in with some antique wax and a wet paper towel, I did the lower half of this mason jar. So Sometimes I can become a very lazy crafter, and so trying to take a shortcut and not sand down the UPC code, I tried to paint over it and it did not work, so I had to go outside, sand it down, and then restain it. 
So I know when I pick up barbecue for myself, waitress always asks me if I'd like my sauce hot, medium, or mild. So I thought it'd be super cute to make this jar into a makeshift sauce jar. And after the last project vinyl flop, I applied this vinyl off camera. This is how this piece turned out. I just added some lines and dots around the edges, a shoestring bow, and I enhanced the lid. And that's it, guys. I did apply a couple of jingle bo Jenga blocks to the back, or not Jenga blocks, tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree, so it would stand up. All right, quickly going through DIY number five. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you guys, this, after all of the problems with the vinyl today, I pre-cut the vinyl and I was going to put it on a frame that my friend had given to me but I wasn't going to stick so I found a charger that I had here around the house added and this little saying I saw at Michael's on a sign there where it says welcome to our porch where time wasted is where where wasting time is time well wasted added some um, boxwood greenery some shoestring bows did a little distressing. It's definitely not what I envisioned, but after all of the vinyl problems today, I just felt that it would be better for it to adhere to plastic. And if I decide to change my mind on the piece, I can just wash off the chalk paint and start over fresh. So guys, here's a little recap of today's projects. Thank you so much for watching. I know this video was a little longer than usual. Don't forget to check out the playlist. It's linked in the description box below. And a special thank you to Missy, Emily, and Devin for hosting and co-hosting today's video. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.